hi everyone welcome back to another video and welcome back to my youtube channel if you're new here hi my name is onyeka and if you're a returning subscriber thank you so very much for returning please don't forget to turn on your post notification just so you get notified whenever i post a new video so today's video i'm going to be talking about the jobs i did as an international student i'm so excited for this video because it's been a long time coming like we've come a long way and i always wanted to carry you guys along with me i was just so tired sometimes i'm not always in the right frame of mind especially when i had to balance school with work it wasn't as easy as i expected but now that i'm done i'm just here to spill the tea and just let you guys know how life was for me at that moment so without further ado let's just head right into the video so the first job i did when i came as an international student was i wouldn't say that was like a job because i wasn't getting paid or i did i never got paid for that particular job so let me take you guys down memory lane if you can remember vividly a particular video i made when i was going from store to store submitting my cv and just letting people know that i'm, I'm unemployed and i needed a job sorry do you work here yes okay um i actually came to see if i can apply for a job I'm not hiring right now. Oh, okay, all right. Thank you. Yeah. Please, if you haven't watched that video, I'll leave the link down or I'll leave it somewhere here. So you just check out that video and see how my day went that day. Looking back now, I'm just laughing at that video because. <laughs> Anywho, I was going from store to store, asking different employers to employ me. I would submit my CV, I would submit my number or I would submit my details and was letting them know my intentions and I needed a job. So eventually, I didn't get the job that day. That same week, I walked into another store, more like grocery store, and I made my intention known as well. And he was like, okay, you could come tomorrow and start. I was so excited. Like, I was very excited. Oh, I have started a job. I got a job and all that so the next day on getting there and this guy is telling me we are going to be training you for a couple of days just to see how good you are and if we see that you're good then you could start the job and I was excited for that but they said my training was not going to be paid it was going to be for free <laughs> so i'll just be coming every day to learn to the point where they feel i'm very good then they could actually hire me and start paying me and i told my friends about it and they were like nobody trains for free like any organization that hires you at the moment they hire you you should know that they are going to pay you for training so wherever you start whenever you start training you are meant to be paid for the training and he was like why should they be using you it's more like they are using you because you're being trained for free i didn't really feel it honestly because it was just a stone tree from where i lived at that point but then i was still not being paid for training so i went the first day and he showed me lots and lots of things in the store and i was meant to memorize all these things off the top of my head oh this is the price for this one they didn't have like the what do they call that stuff at other bigger grocery stores where you could just scan and the price will pop up it wasn't there so i was i had a book like this where he gave me something like this where i had to write down all the prizes for all the items um in the store so i was writing and writing i had a book like this and this book was literally filled up so i was meant to memorize the prizes for each product and all of that mm, quite interesting so i went home that day i was like okay you know what let me just see how it goes like at least let me just get used to it i feel i'm going to pick up as fast as possible just so they could hire me and mind you there is minimum wage job and there are jobs below minimum wage that job was way below minimum wage and i'm talking about ten dollars per hour that's what this guy or these people wanted to offer me insufficient funds you ain't got no money a student that came here and had bills to pay so i accepted it well we start from somewhere and they told me oh people actually start from somewhere you could just start you can never tell and as a new person as a new student that i was i was like you know what let me just give it a shot you could never tell where another opportunity could come from right so i went the first day i went the second day and the third day i was like no 
I can't do this because I was still schooling. I had bills to pay and this guy is just kept on telling me when you're ready, when you get used to the whole store, then we will hire you and we'll start paying you. So for the three days I went, I was going there for free. And I had to tell myself, you know what, you can't do this. If you don't get a job, just go back home and sit down and relax because you can't continue working for free. So I went back home, I just stayed back continued applying for jobs and all of that and then one day a friend of mine called me and was like she wasn't able to make it to a particular job that i should go cover up for her that was the factory job i went i made a video about it and that video has done so well like i was just like ah you're not going i could go cover up for you and she didn't want to lose that job so i just went in that day and i did the shift so that was the first actual job that paid me that i took or I worked in Canada um, that job was hectic I'm not going to lie at first I was like oh, I can do it because you legit that was the first job like you legit have to stand for it as you are standing starting now it was a motor vehicle factory so you had to stand for a very long period of time so I was standing and damn i was i was exhausted but then i got paid at the end of the day i got paid i was happy so that was the very first job i actually did and got paid i was i was quite excited because that was the first money i made in canada i was like oh nice nice so after that job then i was out of job again because obviously the job i did wasn't my own i just covered up for someone then i kept on applying and applying and then i now got another job and it was a care job but then again i did that job for just two weeks the problem i had with um job especially as an international student was just that most people do not want to take in students well, like you could actually start an interview and everything would be going well you'll be having fun interacting with the hr and you guys could actually be going along so well and the moment you're just like oh yeah i'm a student and they'll be like oh we are sorry we don't want to take up students anymore or we don't even actually want to take up students because your timing doesn't always like we need someone that could actually show up full time and that that moment they will drop you get out i order you no. No, George. Charlotte! You cannot force me away. So, that care job I got, I just did it for a couple of time. And once they found out that I was a student, and as at then, the 20 hours restriction was still very much in effect. So, I couldn't actually work more than 20 hours. So, the moment those people found out that I was a student and I couldn't work more than 20 hours, they stopped giving me shifts and that was just how it went so i kept on applying i got some other another care job this time around it was easy peasy just i just had to give them my availability they were okay with me being a student so i just had to give them my availability and it was a very easy job because all you need to do is just to be in a companion with the client so you just have conversations with the clients talk about anything and you're going to be going to the client's house you just go sit down it was easy peasy and if you were lucky enough to meet some good people they will just put netflix for you it was actually an easy job so i did that job for a while because i was still schooling that was like the only job that actually took me in because i was a student and then so another thing i noticed was that some jobs especially care jobs would be will require you to have a car like the criteria were just so crazy so i couldn't get in some other care jobs because i didn't have a car and there was this lucky day i was in the gym in my apartment as i then and i met this jamaican lady she she was the sweetest girl ever and i told her that i was in search of a job like i haven't been working i just made her understand that i was really really desperately in search of a job and i'm going to tell you guys once you are in search of a job or once you come in and you're thinking or you're finding it difficult to get jobs don't shut your mouth like anywhere you're going literally let everybody know that you're in certain a job if you go into the gym or if you go into the mall anywhere if you're having conversations with people just pitch it in oh please i'm looking for a job do you have vacancy in your organization oh please i'm looking for a job do you guys have a, a vacancy in wherever you're working because you could never tell as at that day i told when i was in the gym i told her that like the girl i met there I told her that um, I was in search of a job and I needed a job desperately and luckily for me they were actually looking for people in her workplace so she was like oh I could actually 
talk to my HR because we're actually in search of people. And she made, she was just like heaven sent, more like she was just God sent because she pursued that thing to the end, made sure I got in. So I started the job. I started, um, it was in a retirement home and I was more like a food server. So you would just literally go to the kitchen and once the chefs in the kitchen pass out the dishes, your job was to just go serve the residents the dishes. It was a very sweet job because at the end of the day, if you're going to be working with a very good chef, they could leave like meals for you. The residents will place an order. So you actually go and ask them, what do you want to have for dinner today? And there are like three different options for them. There's like a main dish, appetizer, dessert, and all those stuff. So it depends on the particular person. If the person wants to start with like an appetizer, you go get an appetizer for them. If they want to go, then they go to the main meal and they have a dessert. It's just like they were quite, they have very independent so they could actually do everything themselves and it was just very easy we we're just serving and giving them their food I won't say it was very very easy I'll take that back it wasn't very easy because we had to do a lot a lot of working it was more like fast-paced just imagine you're going to an actual restaurant that's just how it was but this time around it was just more like the seniors that were there and you just have to deal with their tantrums sometimes you just have to put on a smiley face you understand that just be empathetic and all of that so I was doing that serving job and I was balancing it with the other care job I had so I was mixing that up in order to get my 20 hours per week because I wasn't getting enough shift from the boost job. So I actually had to get two jobs and mix it up in order to get up to 20 hours per week. And that was what I did for the longest time. I worked in the retirement home for a while um, as a server and also a care. I was also working in the healthcare sector. I now took up and I now applied to another job. I got a job with a petrol station, more like a gas station. Um, this job included you. It's just like, you know, when you go to a gas station, right? And you're going to be working inside the grocery store part. So what the job entailed was that you would be at the store. So people could come in, like walk in and want to get things from the store. They could want to get like candies, chocolate, biscuits, or any other thing. You would attempt to them as well as those people that are outside that want to get gas. So what you have to do will be like, you have to authorize them from inside in order to be able to get the gas from outside so the thing about this particular job was that i got the job through a connection like i didn't really have to do too much because i knew someone at that point that knew the manager so it was just easy peasy i got in and i was i started my orientation but that job i couldn't i couldn't complete the orientation because I was overwhelmed at that particular period I was overwhelmed I didn't know how far I could go because I had like remember I had like two more jobs so I just needed to take up another one just have more hours right so I started the orientation they were teaching me things to know there were too many so many things to know you had to deal with customers that were walking into the store to buy like biscuits and all those things from the store as well as authorizing those outside that want to get gas so you're multitasking it was like fast-paced if you're not careful someone could actually come to the store and will shoplift or something like that and you really want to pay you're dealing with cash as well so you have to be very meticulous and you may have to be very attentive um to balance the balance the books and all those accounting stuff so you had to do all of that so i started i started my training i think i did just like five days or three days training and it was at that point i was like i could not come like i could not make it anymore i saw myself breaking down because it was just too much to do i had other jobs <laughs> i had like two other jobs why i actually took this other job was because that my other care job they were not giving me shift as much as i wanted and i saw this opportunity and i was like you know what let me jump on it if it's good i will just resign from that my other care job but when i started it was something i could not do like it was just a lot to learn of course if i stayed more it would have been easy peasy but then it was just a lot to learn you have to deal with some customers that will actually come in and shoplift like your your eyes have to be everywhere with that particular kind of job oh you didn't steal it don't check me i'm not stealing Ooh. Ooh, you naughty little boy you naughty I'm, naughty boy get out you. especially you get out so i would have loved to actually stay back in that job 
but i did not want to stay and it was a very minimum wage job i will have to stand for that amount of time for a pay as little as that i wasn't up for that along the line i just said to myself that i was not going to continue the job so in training after the training they gave me i was i said I could not come anymore because uh, I was just I couldn't just make it anymore and guess what they did not pay me for training because she explained to me that if that was how they were going to do it then everybody will actually just come in do training get paid and resign so after that job I told them I wasn't going to come back and they didn't pay me for the training and I was like okay whatever I just didn't show up anymore and I, I didn't come back and then I went back to the other jobs I was doing I just kept on doing it I did that for quite a while and I just needed more time I needed more shifts that was when the whole 20 hours per week thing was lifted then I needed to move on to a job that was going to give me more time because I was available my availability at this particular period had gone up to 40 hours per week so I started applying to jobs and then there was this particular job fair that came up it was in a factory <laughs> it was in an ice cream factory and <laughs> that job is was was the most difficult job i had ever done i have ever done in my entire existence i'm emotionally stressed i'm emotionally downcast i am so confused of all about life then that job was annoying it was too hectic so it was in an ice cream factory and imagine how cold ice cream is then imagine the winter then imagine you going into the cold or going into a freezer to go and walk it's freaking freezing in here mr bigglesworth it was that annoying you have to go inside there it was a very 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 big factory yeah they are where they produce ice cream. it's a very popular brand they operate globally as well so we have to work there in the ice cream factory part sometimes you get to work in a section where it's not so cold you could wear like regular clothes and go in but other times when they put you in the part of the factory that is actually very cold it's so depressing and sometimes they could throw you it wasn't like very stable they could put you in morning shifts afternoon shifts or night shifts sometimes so it depends every week you get to know the particular shift you're being thrown to and sometimes when they put me on night shifts i just become so cranky like it's so annoying i didn't have to sleep and i love my sleep so much but it depends wherever they throw you for the next week that's where you get to work for that week because you are not in control of your schedule you're not in control of um the timing and all of that so the hr does that so i worked in that particular factory for quite a while as well just doing the thing trying to <laughs> she doing the thing putting in the work I'm able to make money and just be okay and live life and you know all those good stuff so i worked in there for quite a while and at that point i had resigned from two other of my jobs because since the schedule or the timing for that particular factory wasn't fixed there was no way i was going to balance it with the two other jobs i had so i resigned from my two other jobs and then i moved to that particular factory and when they took me in for that factory they said it was going to be a sit down offer if an employer is telling you they are going to give you an employment but it's going to be sit now that job is not like a fixed job it's not long term so once you get into a job and they said it's seasonal full time have it at the back of your mind that at the end of the season they are going to lay you off and that was what happened with the other job i got at the end of the season they were like oh thank you for your time i'm going to lay you guys off right now once the factory is up again in operation we're going to call you back so automatically you are out of job like you're automatically out of job you have to be looking for something else. a way to be ahead of them or a way to be ahead in that particular situation once you just get into this kind of job you start looking for another job immediately because your time in that particular place is not fixed so don't a hundred percent put or depend on that particular job because it's seasonal right they are going to lay you off at the end of the season um so even jobs like what they say and other things like jobs when they tell you oh this job is casual don't expect you as a casual for them to be calling you every time you being a casual staff it means they only call you when the full-time people are not available so they just call you to more like fit in or cover up shifts for those that are full-time so 
even if you get a job that's like casual or seasonal have it at the back of your mind that you are not a hundred percent certain like it's not a hundred percent certain just look for jobs that will give you like full-time permanent or full-time part-time those jobs are more reasonable honestly anybody that comes in to study as an international student i'm giving it up to you guys i'm giving it up to myself and every other international student out there it's not easy it was not easy but we scale through or you will scale through if you're in that particular situation right now and you're thinking about how how it's tiring i would just say hang in there you can do this um you got this i was there i did it and you can also do it but most importantly just make sure that you have time to rest create time to rest just so you don't burn out because it could get very intense sometimes it could get really overwhelming um yeah so i've gotten to the end of this video these are all the jobs i did as an international student from when i came into canada up until i finished school and i hope you guys enjoyed this video if you have any comments let me know what jobs did you do while you were a student or what kind of jobs did you take up while you were a student or did you work at all or were you sent money from home you know just let me know how was your experience like balancing school and work and was it fun was it not fun just let me know how everything went for you and i'll see you guys in my next video please don't forget to 